Another case for Nick Carter, Master Detective. Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Tonight's curious adventure... A cat brings death. Or Nick Carter and the mystery of the missing Persian. Well, the confounded doggone things to have Riley, happen. Riley, you don't seem very happy to see me this morning. I ain't. Something I've done, or just things in general? Things in particular. Uh, here's your glass of water, Lieutenant. All right. What you get it so cold for? Well, Lieutenant, it ain't. All so right, all right, get out, get out. Now, where'd I put them pills? Taking your vitamins regularly, I see. Excellent mm. idea for anyone inclined to be nervous. Vitamins, nothing. Them's aspirin tablets for headaches. Lieutenant Riley, do you mind if I sit down this lovely morning? Sit down, but don't bother me. I've got too many troubles of my own to be bothered with yours. But I have no troubles, Lieutenant. I feel free as a bird. You would. Care to tell old Uncle Nick what the trouble is? In case you're interested, Mr. Nicholas Carter, you know, I... I am. Shut up if you want to hear this. Oh, sorry. Please forgive In me. In case you're interested, I just had to release Cully Greer from his temporary residence in my jail. Oh, I couldn't get enough on him to hold him for a jury in spite of the fact that every cop in town knows he's guilty. Oh, what a pity. And we've been trailing his sidekick Saban for more than a week steady without a sign of results. The same with that blonde, what do you call her, Reba Dawes. You're right back where we started. Three smooth jobs pulled this month without a smell of a clue. Three big jewel robberies, and my little Boy Scouts are still out chasing rainbows. Uh, you know, Riley, I haven't been following this case very closely, but I have a hunch. Hunch, that... hunch. You can't hold a crook on a hunch. There's been enough high-class sparklers lifted around here in the last 30 days to stock a pawn shop. And we can't put a finger on nobody. Now, you got a hunch. You can't I hold know, a... Riley, I know. You can't hold a crook on a hunch. You got to pin something on him and make it stick. Uh. <laughs> I've heard you say that before. Well, it's true. Why, Nick, I ain't even the phone, had... The Lieutenant. All right. Lieutenant Riley, police headquarters. This is Commissioner uh, Clark, Riley. Oh, oh, yes, 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 sir, Commissioner. Now, look, if somebody doesn't turn up something on these jewel robberies pretty quick now, there's going to be some changes around here. We, we, we've been working hard on it, Commissioner, and I ain't hardly been home long enough to eat, sir. That, that's a fact, sir. The trouble with you, Riley, is in your head, not in your stomach. Maybe we need some new blood in that department. Oh, now, Commissioner, we can't find clues when there ain't none to find. We're doing all we can, sir. You'll have to do better. I expect results within 48 hours. Goodbye. Uh, oh, goodbye, Commissioner. I um, take it that was the um, Commissioner. You take it? Oh, look, Nick, couldn't you go someplace else for a while? Why, Riley, your lack of hospitality amazes me. I only came down to... Yeah, yeah, I... Uh, the buzzer, Lieutenant. All right. Well, what is it now? More trouble? There's a woman out here demanding to see you. And I mean demanding. I ain't receiving visitors today. You'd better be. It's Mrs. Dudley Banks herself. Mrs. Dudley Banks? Ah, you know, Commissioner's favorite aunt. I know who she is. What does she want? Some more contributions she for the... She says she's been robbed, Lieutenant. Robbed? Oh, don't tell me we got another case to break. I can't stand much more of this. All right, send her in. You know, Riley, I remember reading recently that Mrs. Dudley Banks had the finest collection of rubies in the country. Uh, oh, no, Nick. Not rubies. Well, you don't suppose that uh, Mrs. Mrs. Dudley... Dudley Banks, Lieutenant Riley. Uh, Lieutenant Riley, I have come to you personally to report a most distressing thing. I've been robbed in broad daylight and under the most distressing circumstances. You, you, you've been robbed? I by... most certainly have, and I shall expect you to take immediate action. Now, you, you can depend on us, Mrs. Dudley Banks. You know, just what was the, the, the nature of your loss? My cat. Your cat. You said your cat? Precisely, my cat. A lemon-colored Persian of the female sex. She's known as Fluffy. She disappeared from my upstairs living room sometime this morning. Uh, well, uh, isn't it just possible that, that she, the, the cat just uh, strayed off the premises like... Fluffy was stolen, of that I am certain. She's not given to wandering away. Yes, yes, of course, ma'am. Uh, well, what do you expect me to do? 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 Why do you suppose I came down here for sympathy? Well, I expect you to recover the animal, apprehend the criminal, and punish him. Oh, sure, sure. I shall be home after four o'clock. 
At that time, you will be at liberty to inspect the premises. You have my address, of course. Good day. <laughs> cat. A Persian cat. <laughs> of all the confounded nonsense! Oh, but Riley, Riley, think. Think how lucky you are that it wasn't her rubies. Lucky, you call it. Well, Lieutenant, what are you going to do about this, uh, pardon my pun, catastrophe? Do about it is if I didn't have enough troubles now. That old cluck may be the commissioner's favorite aunt, but if she thinks I'm going to assign anybody to round up a stray cat, she's a lot... You know, Riley, this case interests me. What? Yes. Why, a case like this might develop some startling angles before we get through with it. Oh, Nick, quit your kidding. No, no, really, Riley, I'm serious. This, I feel sure, is a case worthy of my talents. It'll be a pleasure for me to turn from the pursuit of murderers and other such small-time criminals to the really important work of discovering who walked off with the lovely feline pet of Mrs. Dudley Banks. Are you kidding, Nick? Definitely not, Riley. At four o'clock this afternoon, I shall ring Mrs. Dudley Banks' bell, wipe my feet on a doormat, hand my hat to the butler and see what I can uncover about the mystery of the missing Persian. Go! Oh. So long, Lieutenant. <laughs> yes, sir? I'm from police headquarters. Lieutenant Riley sent me to investigate the loss of Mrs. Dudley Banks' cat. Oh, yes, sir. Mrs. Dudley Banks is expecting you. Come in, please. Thank you. This way, please. Mrs. Dudley Banks is in her sitting room. Thank you. A police person, madam. A police person? <clears throat> yes, madam. About the cat, madam. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, come in. That will be all, Carrington. Very good, madam. My name is Carter, Mrs. Dudley Banks. Lieutenant Riley sent me here to see if I can find your cat. To see if you can find her, you must find her. Oh, uh, that's what I mean, madam. Now, will you please tell me what you know about her disappearance? There's very little to tell. I was obliged to be absent from the house this morning for about two hours. I left my poor Fluffy right here in her own little basket. It's that one there with the pink ribbons on it. Ah, uh, yes. Now, who was here in the house while you were gone? My butler and my maid were both here, but neither of them paid the slightest attention to poor Fluffy. It was not until I myself returned at noon that she was missed. She was a lemon-yellow-colored Persian, I believe. Yes, yes, a beautiful little creature. Here, let me show you her picture. Oh, I don't think that'll be necessary, Mrs. Dudley Banks. Not necessary? That's absurd. Surely you can find her more easily when you know what she looks like. Uh, very well, madam, if you insist. Of course I insist. Here. Now, uh, this one was taken about two months ago. Ah, yes. It's, um, it's not a very good picture because uh, this stupid photographer sent his assistant instead of coming himself. Oh, I see. Well, a very uh, pretty cat, isn't it? Uh, she? Mm, she is. That picture doesn't do her justice. Now, what happened when you discovered she was missing? I was brokenhearted. No, I mean, uh, did you look for her? What a silly question. Of course we looked for her. We searched the whole house thoroughly, but Fluffy was gone. Has she ever run away before? I should say not. She adored me. I see. Madam, this is a very baffling case. There are a number of, um, angles. Are you sure nothing else is missing beside the cat? Nothing. We checked everything. And there were no visitors this morning while you were out? No one. No one except the young woman from the ladies' auxiliary, of course. Ah. What did she come here for? Every Wednesday afternoon, my friends and I meet here to roll bandages. And this young woman comes the day before to bring us the materials. She's been coming here regularly? Every week. Do you know her name? I believe this young lady's name is Miss Conroy. She took over the job only last week. Oh. She hasn't been here before last week, huh? No, another girl did it before that. But, uh... Why are you asking all these questions about her? Surely you can't think she had anything to do with it. Well, you never can be sure, madam. Oh, but she's such a sweet girl. A, a blonde with beautiful green eyes, just like my poor dear Fluffy. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, oh, thank you, Mrs. Dudley Banks. I'll uh, be getting back to headquarters now. You mean you've solved the mystery of dear Fluffy's disappearance? Perhaps. 
Will you have your butler show me out, please? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, Carrington. Yes, madam. Show Mr. Carter out. Yes, madam. This way, sir. Good day, Mrs. Dudley Banks. Thank you, Carrington. Not at all, sir. Good day. Very interesting. This may produce results after all. <laughs> Auxiliary. Oh, this is the office of Brown, Brown, White, and Brown, attorneys. Yes? Could you give us the address of a Miss Conroy who works with you? We have a legal communication for her. Miss Conroy? One moment, please. Stranger things have happened. I wonder Miss possible. Conroy lives at 76 East Dover Place. Thank you. Not at all. <laughs> Driver, why are you stopping here? Well, this is the address you give me, mister. This is 76 East Dover Place? Well, it's as near as I can get to it. But this is an empty lot. I can't help that, mister. It's 76 East Dover Place, just the same. Oh. Okay. Take me to the Mayflower Restaurant at 56th and 34th. Right. a little early for dinner tonight, Mr. Carter. Nobody gets in here before six, generally. Oh, never mind, Katie. Bring me a nice, thick slab of roast beef. Oh, you're just fooling, Mr. Carter. This is Meatless Tuesday. Oh, yes, so it is, Katie. I never seen to remember that. Well, what's on the menu? Here, you can look for yourself. Thanks. If you had to buy meat for a family the way I do, you'd remember it. It's a job getting things these days. Yeah, I suppose it is. Mm, why, just this afternoon, before I come to work, I went to the butcher shop to get some liver. My husband calls it cat food, but he eats it just the same. <laughs> well, I got some, and a nice piece it was, too, but I had to fight for it. Fight for it? Yeah, blonde little chick tried to get it away from me. Last piece there was, but I got it. And slapped her face, too, I did. <laughs> and she didn't want it for herself at all, wanted it for a cat, imagine. Her cat? What kind of cat? What's the difference what kind of a cat it was? The idea of hard-working folks having to go without... So some cat can eat the best there is. This blonde, she wouldn't be young and pretty, would he? Lives in the neighborhood, maybe? Oh, she's pretty to look at. But the language she uses to make your hair curl. Yeah, yeah, she lives around here. I seen her going in and out of the Mecca Apartments across the park. She's a movie actress, maybe. Mecca Apartments, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I wonder if she's home now. Here, d d don't you want any dinner? I thought you'd come in here to eat. Oh, sorry, Katie. I'll be back later. Right now, I have to follow a hunch and see a girl about a cat. So long. Dream of dawn. Name on the door as big as life. Hey, that's the young lady Riley's been trying to pin something on for the past few weeks, if I recall correctly. Well, Nick, let's see what happens. Well? Very well, thanks. Here, what's the idea of pushing into my apartment like that? Well, just dropped in to say hello. What do you want here? Katie was right. You are good looking. Listen, fella, if you don't clear out of here, I'll... Pretty cat you got there, too. Persian, isn't it? Never mind the cat. What's the game? Come on, talk up or get out. All right, here it is. You call yourself Conroy, get to be a worker for the ladies' auxiliary, get chummy with Mrs. Dudley Banks, and then walk off with her pet Persian under your raincoat. What's the answer? Oh, a dick, are you? Could be. I think Lieutenant Riley would like to have a chat with you down at headquarters. Lieutenant Riley had me down at headquarters and had to let me go. He's got nothing on me. Then you won't have to worry, will you? We'll go down and confer with him anyway. We'll take Fluffy along with us. You let that cat alone. I'm not leaving here for you or anyone else. No. Mrs. Dudley Banks didn't like the idea of you taking her. <gasps> you better answer that. <laughs> 
Get somebody I'd like to see and be yourself. I don't want to have to get rough. Watch yourself. I'll be right behind these curtains watching you. Oh, Scully, it's you. Sure, it's me, babe. Who'd you expect? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I just... What's the matter, uh... babe? You look scared. No, I'm not scared. Uh... You ready to travel? We're rolling tonight. Scully, uh... Say, you did a nice job getting us the layout of the old lady's place. I'm proud of you. You know, that lady's auxiliary racket worked out okay. Oh. Me and Saban turned the trick in no time. The wall safe was a pipe to crack, and we cleaned it. We put the maid and the old lady to sleep and dumped them in the closet. They never got a squint at us at all. We had to get rough for the butler. The old coot tried to make a getaway. Yeah, we had to give him the wakes. Scully, we... I... Say, are you sick or something? I got something uh, to tell you. There's a dick behind the curtain. Huh? Both of you. Turn around and keep your hands in sight. Get him up, Scully. Now, let's see if you're carrying a gun. What the... Just keep him up, Scully. And you too, Reba. I'm not pointing this gun of mine at you for exercise. Oh, no gun, huh? What's the matter? Don't you wish I had one? Then you could pull me for carrying a concealed weapon. Nothing doing, copper. I don't carry any hardware outside of business hours, see? Hey, what are you doing here, anyhow? Just been waiting around for you to show up. Hey, look, babe. How come this dick's parked here in your place? I tried to tell you, Scully. He just busted in on me just before you came. Must have had some reason for busting in. Well, never mind that now, Scully. Let's all go down and see Riley. You should have held you in jail a little longer today. It would have queered the job you just pulled at Mrs. Dudley Banks' residence. Well, that's the answer to my problem, anyhow. Now just stand there, you two, while I give Riley a ring. Life will be a great deal happier for him when I tell him who's coming down to see him. Police headquarters, Lieutenant Riley speaking. Oh, Riley, I have a surprise for you. I already got one, Nick. You know what was pulled off not half an hour ago? I do. You found Mrs. Dudley Banks and her maid bundled up in a closet, and the butler shot to death. Uh, Probably the wall safe had been cleaned out, and Mrs. Dudley Banks' prized collection of rubies is missing. Uh, Nick, how the... Where did you... Uh, how Very come simple, you... simple, Riley. Katie had liver for supper tonight, uh, see? And, uh, hey, put on those lights again. Don't try anything. Uh, 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 hey, Nick. Uh, uh, Nick. Okay, Reba. Turn the lights on. What's going on there? Mrs. Dunn's got it. Hey, now, what's Papa, all that noise? You stay put right where you are. Okay, Scully, just as you say. Good work, Nick. babe. You turn Nick, these lights on me. just at the right time. Wait, you better pick up the this? table and put that phone back. Okay. Lights, which was just behind me. I figured we'd have a better chance in the dark. You're awful quick, Scully. You're too quick for that copper. You didn't get a chance to spill anything to Riley. We ain't in the picture at all, and we won't be either. I was pretty scared for a minute. Hey, where's Sabin? We're meeting him. I had Jake bring me here to get you. Oh. He's waiting for us downstairs. Now, you ready to travel? Sure, I've been ready for the past hour. Thought it was you at the door when this dick knocked. That's why I opened it so quick. Yeah, let's get going then. Say, ain't you going to take care of the flat foot before we leave? Not here. The one these dead dicks tie you up with it and, and maybe hook me in too. Yeah, just take him along with us for a while. And keep Riley guessing too. How mighty nice of you to take me along to meet Sabe and Scully. Then I'll have all three of you together in one place where it'll be easier to take you in. You know, Riley'd hate to see you leave town now. Now, cut the comedy, copper. You're going along, but not far. So pick up your hat, big boy, and march yourself downstairs. And don't forget, I'll be right behind you, all the way. Okay, Scully. You're the boss, now that you've got my gun. Oh, don't forget your cat, Reba. Gosh, that's right. I almost did. Come on, Fluffy. Hey, where'd that thing come from? It's mine. Isn't she a dear? Picked her up today. Just couldn't resist her. You gonna drag that along with you? Sure, I can't leave her behind. She won't be any trouble. Okay, let's get going. I don't want to keep Jake waiting. Anybody bother you while you was waiting, Jake? Nah. Say, who's that with you, Scully? Yeah, one of Riley's bloodhounds. Use that up in front with Jake, Reba. Okay. Right. A dick. Hey, what's happened, Scully? It's what's he right, doing here? Jake, get going. Yeah, we're behind <sighs> schedule now on account of this guy. Okay, but I don't like it. You ought to get rid of him. We will, when the time comes. Hey, look, gumshoes. How come you happen to drop in on Reba tonight? Just a hunch. Yeah? Yeah. Funny how things break, isn't it? You see, it all started when Katie had liver for supper. You said uh, that before. What about it? So here we are, the three of us. Funny, isn't it? Yeah, I can't stop laughing. What's so funny, Scully? Yes, that dick. He knows the answers. I'll tell you when the time comes. 
But first, let's find Sabin. Yeah, here's the place, Scully. The garage here. Yeah, pull right inside. Sabin will be waiting there for us. Right. That you, Scully? Yeah. Hey, where you been? If we don't get upstate before morning, we're going to be... Hey, who's that with you? Keep your shirt on and close the garage doors before some fool cop shows up and begins asking questions. Yeah, okay. Come over here, Sabin. Yeah? I want to show you a prize package I picked up tonight. A real live bloodhound straight from Riley's kennels. Him? How'd he get into the picture? Walked in on his own two feet. Well, he won't go out that way. And I have to carry him when we get through with him. Yeah, that's what I've been telling him. But it don't seem to worry him none. What's the use of worrying? I can't do anything about it. Yet. Not yet or ever, copper. You're a dead duck. <laughs> hey, give Jake the guns, Cully. He can stay here and hold it on the gum show. You and Reba come into the house with me a minute. Okay, Sabin. Here, Jake. Keep this pointing at that dick's heart. Yeah. <laughs> I have to laugh when I think it's his own gun that's keeping him quiet. <laughs> you keep quiet, all right. Or something's going to happen to him. Hey, how long are you going to be gone? Just a couple of minutes. We'll be right back. Everything's all set to go as soon as we finish what we got to do. Okay, but don't forget we got a long way to go yet tonight. We ain't forgot. You just keep your eye on the copper till we get back. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Hey, can I knock him off? Not yet. Wait till we get a ways out of town. Then you can finish him any way you like. <laughs> Hear that, copper? You and me is going to have fun. I don't like cops, and I'm going to take it all out on you. I'm sure that'll be great fun, Jay. Yeah. You won't think so. Hey, <clears throat> Dick, don't start moving. Stay where you're on that back seat now. One more move, and I'll plug you. Scully said not to shoot, Jake. There might be cops around. You come any closer, I'll let you have it. Cops or no cops. Remember it, Jake. Cops. I warn you. I've been... <laughs> you must have a gun of your own somewhere, on you? Yeah, there it is. Now, my friend, I feel a little better. I'll just put this piece of wire around your wrists. And around your ankles. And slip this rag in your mouth. Tie it back here. There. Now, don't think you'll bother me any. And I'm going to have my hands full in a few minutes. I'm going to take you and your three pals back to Riley. Now, I'll just go over here and stand behind this door. And when they come back, I'll be a one-man welcoming party. Okay. Come on, you lugs. I'm waiting. Well, Mr. Copper, you're about to take your last ride. I hope you... Saban, look. Huh? What is it? Jake's out cold. The dick's broken loose. Look out. Up with your hands, all of you. Hey, hey, Stop you those bags and get oh, your hands on no, the air. Stop. Maybe fast, Saban, but not that fast. Hey, don't shoot, don't shoot. You know I ain't got no gun. Let's we'll have another look to make sure. Oh, you're clean. Now we'll just take Saban's gun. I'll make sure he doesn't have another one on him anyway. Oh. He's clean, too. I'll keep those hands where I can see them, Reba. I just want to get a handkerchief out of my handbag. All right, but no tricks. Can't a girl use her own handkerchief when she has to blow? <laughs> Sorry to have to sock you in the jaw, lady. Suppose I might have known you'd have a gun in your handbag. All right, you two. Pick her up and put her in the back of the car. And then get in yourself. Scully, you drive. Save when you're sitting back with Reba and me. Just push Jake over, Scully. He won't bother you. All right, get going. Okay, okay. Then we'll all drive down and surprise Lieutenant Riley. Won't that be fun? And after they left you alone with Jake, then what? Well, Patsy, when the three of them went into the house, I knew the chance I'd been waiting for had come. Mm -hmm. I was in the back seat, and Jake was in the front seat, holding my gun on me. Mm -hmm. So I got up out of my seat, moved over to Jake... Took the gun away from him and punched him in the jaw. He went out like a light. Nick, you moved up on a man holding a pistol on you? Why in the world didn't he kill you? Sounds to me like a hairbreadth Harry story. Well, he tried to kill me, all right, Benji. But he didn't know what I knew. That's why I had the advantage on him. Oh, stop teasing, Nick. Tell me, why in the world didn't he shoot you? As I said, Patsy, he tried to. But the gun wasn't loaded. Wasn't loaded? No. 
That's why I felt perfectly safe in just taking it away from him. Patsy, you should have seen the look on his face when he pointed the gun at my heart and pulled the trigger three times. But I thought you said it was your gun. He did, Patsy. And it wasn't loaded? No, Patsy. With shame and remorse, I admit it wasn't loaded. You see, when Scully jumped on me in Reba's apartment, I tried to shoot him with it. But the trigger simply clicked. Me? Then I suddenly remembered that I'd been cleaning it the night before when I got that long-distance phone call. And then I just forgot to load it again. That's a dangerous mistake to make, Nick, even if it did save your life this time. Quite right, Patsy, quite right. Well, I certainly had a lot of fun watching Scully pointing that empty gun at me all the time we were going to meet Saban. You know, I really enjoyed it. I wish all my mistakes could turn out as well. This has been another of the strange adventures of Nick Carter, Master Detective, which are brought to you regularly by WOR Mutual. Well, Nick, what's next week's story going to be about? Before I tell you that, John, there's something else I want to say. Something very special. And this is addressed to you, our audience. We've been with you every week for the past year now, bringing you the strange and exciting adventures of Nick Carter. And now I'm very happy to be able to announce that beginning next Monday, April 17th, we're going to have the pleasure of being with you five times a week. Five quarter hours a week, Mondays through Fridays at 9.15 p.m. Eastern Wartime, over most of these stations. And I assure you that we're looking forward to these meetings with you very eagerly. So remember, we won't be back Saturday nights anymore. But we will be here every evening, Monday through Friday, at a quarter past nine Eastern Wartime, beginning this coming Monday, April 17th. And we hope you'll be with us as regular in the future as you have been in the past. Oh, gee, Nick, that's swell, isn't it? Five times a week. And do we have a lot of exciting stories to tell. Oh, you bet we do, Patsy. A lot of really exciting cases. And I think we'll start next Monday with a story which I call Kidnapped for Sale. Or the Mystery of the Missing Babies. Have you heard of the latest racket? Stealing young babies from their parents, not for ransom, but to sell them to people who want the baby for their own... Well, it's one of the dirtiest and lowest forms of kidnapping found in the underworld today. And when a young mother who'd lost her baby came to Nick for help, he was glad of the chance to break up the kidnap ring and catch the fiends who stole innocent and helpless children and then sold them to the highest bidders. So if you want to be in on the beginning of one of the most exciting chases I've ever had, listen next Monday evening at 9.15 Eastern Wartime to the story Kidnapped for Sale. So long, everybody. So long. And so long to both of you, Nick and Patsy. In the strange adventure you have just heard, Nick Carter was impersonated by Lon Clark, Patsy by Helen Choate, Lieutenant Riley by Humphrey Davis. Original music was played by Lou White. The entire production was written and directed by Jock McGregor. <laughs> Next Monday evening at 9.15 Eastern War Time, listen to the beginning of another curious experience of Nick Carter entitled... Kidnapped for Sale. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Missing Babies. This story is a copyrighted feature of Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. And beginning next Saturday night, the popular series True Detective Mysteries will be broadcast over most of these stations... Every Saturday night at 10.15 Eastern Wartime, in addition to Wednesday afternoons at 4.30 Eastern Wartime. This is Mutual. Mutual.